Hi and welcome everyone. Welcome to the second Global Anka Fan by Anka Daily. It is with great pleasure that we welcome you at this very important, very heartfelt and crucial event for every single person involved with Anka Daily. Uh, what a way to start. Uh, I mean, we saw speeches from Her Royal Highness uh, Princess Dina Mirat challenging her friends to donate for pediatric cancer research. We saw the heartfelt messages from Messi, from SIOPS President Guillermo Shantada. And now following those strong and emotional videos, we have Professor Maria Babak from the very east, Hong Kong, joining us. Uh, let me introduce her. Professor Maria Babak uh, is the head of the Babak Lab, and she's also an assistant professor at the City University of Hong Kong. She is one of the Onco Daily's 2024 Ivon Award winners in the mentorship category. And now, today, she has joined us to share her speech, her call to action to raise funds for pediatric cancer research and to advance this field. Welcome, Professor Babak. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, Ellen. Can you hear me well? Yes, I can hear you well. Okay. So thank you very much for the invitation. And in fact, it's been uh, one year already since we presented our first uh, call to action at the uh, Global Oncoton. And uh, I have to say, sadly, the situation is not getting better. Maybe it's getting worse. And uh, let me talk a little bit about that. So um, I'm uh, not a medical doctor. I'm a medicinal chemist and I'm working on the drug uh, discovery, including the drug uh, development for childhood cancers. And uh, there are various problems uh, in this field. Well, in fact, even when I was preparing for this speech today, I had to access the paper and uh, only scientists can access it uh, if they have uh, um, access to the university libraries. But for example, if it is somebody from the general public, for example, the parents who want to get more information about science uh, and current status of uh, the research in this field, they have to pay for this paper. So we're in a very, very difficult situation where scientists uh, cannot really distribute their results freely because we as scientists have to pay for the open access. And uh, if we can't, then the parents or the patients themselves or even the doctors, they still have to pay for our paper. So it's a very, very big problem. But what I would like to talk about is the current uh, status of the drug discovery. So we are now uh, in the a uh, time where there is a new paradigm for drug development. And uh, I prepared a little bit of the information, so I would like to share with you. So, in fact, um, of course, majority of uh, cancers right now is still treated with the cytotoxic regimens. And we know that cytotoxic regimens are very uh, um, uh, serious, can be a very serious problem, both for adult and pediatric patients because of their high toxicity. And in the recent years, the cytotoxic regimens have been uh, slowly shifting to the molecular targeted agents. And uh, on the one hand, this is a good news, but on the other hand, there are several problems with it because uh, even though there are uh, new targets being developed and there are new molecular targeted uh, therapies, not all of them can really become uh, drugs. So not all of them can really become targetable, especially for pediatric patients. And uh, um there is also a serious policy issue here because uh, if we are developing the drugs for very rare molecular targets, this uh, uh, might become uh, not not very easy to do, especially in some countries. So we are, we are facing a very serious issue where we have uh, some targets, new molecular targets that have been identified, but maybe because of how rare they are, we won't be able to develop the uh, molecular drugs for them. And even if we develop them in the lab, like I do, we won't be able to translate them to uh, clinics. So what can we do? The One of the most important things uh, that can help uh, pediatric patients is the, of course, uh, development of new clinical trials. So clinical trials have always been important and they will continue to have a very essential role in the development of novel drugs. So there should be the translation from the bench to clinic, and clinical trials is the only way to do that. 
So what we are doing good as a society, the enrollment uh, is really good. And uh, at the moment, there is a very high rate of recruitment in general to the clinical trials involved in pediatric patients. And uh, this is one of the greatest achievements, I would say, for uh, pediatric oncology, because uh, the more people we recruit, uh, the better results we can get, hopefully. So, And uh, this resulted in the improvement of survival. Uh, However, uh, as we understand more of the biology and uh, more targeted drugs are developed, then uh, uh, we need to kind of uh, uh, also develop the new clinical trial designs. So there can be a problem with the harmonization of the procedures and there can be problems between uh, the running of the clinical trials in Asia and in America and in Europe. And uh, right now there is uh, no harmonized procedures and no uh, um, outcomes that are similar uh, in different parts of the world when we run the clinical trials. And it's still very difficult to run clinical trials between uh, uh, hospitals which are in different parts of the world. Well, uh, another serious issue is, uh, of course, funding. So what uh, this is the issue that I face every day as the researcher and as the head of the research lab is that uh, usually the funding uh, sources, they come uh, either from the government or they come from the um, uh, some uh, charity societies. And usually the funding is very short term. So you, uh, as a scientist, get two years or three years maximum uh, funding. And during this time, it's literally impossible to develop the drug that will progress to the clinical trials. So this short-termness of the funding remains the problem. So first of all, there is not enough of the money that uh, um, we get as scientists. And even if we get it, we get it for a very short time. And then we have to uh, really target something that is, let's say, easily targetable. And when we talk about the uh, development of new, completely new types of clinical trials, or especially if it involves uh, completely new molecular targets, and uh, then it becomes an impossible task, sadly. So um, so that that's why I would like to raise awareness that uh, this is happening. And even if we uh, as scientists want to do our best, sometimes it's impossible because of uh, these issues. Um, of course, uh, for a very long time, we will still continue facing the problem with the toxicity associated with the uh, chemotherapy, but still chemotherapeutic regimens uh, will be one of the main uh, regimens, both for adults and uh, um, uh, pediatric uh, patients. So, of course, the issue of toxicity will remain and uh, we will have to do the better follow up of uh, the survivors and also better um understanding of uh, different types of toxicity, especially when it's uh, a new type of uh, treatment. So because targeted treatment also, in theory, can result in uh, um, toxicity, and we have to better document the side effects from these treatments. So um, there is a stigma in the uh, uh, scientific and medical community that uh, uh, new treatments have to be completely without any side effects. Sadly, uh, this is not possible in most of the cases. And uh, uh, when um, we develop the new drug, we have to argue in the uh, proposals that our drug will lack any kind of toxicity. Otherwise, this kind of proposal will not be funded. But in reality, of course, uh, uh, doctors, especially nurses and uh, um, even uh, cancer advocates, understand that majority of treatments will cause certain type of toxicity. And it has to be better documented and those people who are funding our research they have to understand that uh, most of the cases in most of the cases it's possible to uh, avoid toxicity so there should be awareness about that as well and of course uh, the last thing that I would like to mention is that we really have to collaborate I mentioned it last year and I have to say there is not much change happening uh, between in, in this regard so there should be more collaboration between scientists and and doctors and those people who are funding uh, us. Because uh, very often when I try to talk uh, um, with uh, those people who are um, working in the cancer policy field or um, even are directly responsible for funding, very often they're really, really far away from the fundamental scientists like myself and they don't understand the problems that we are facing. 
So uh, I hope that uh, this Onkathon will be a very successful event and uh, uh, the voices of the fundamental scientists like myself will be also heard and we will be able to raise significant amount of money to help to address the issues that I discussed today. The clinical trial design, the um, inability to fund the new clinical trials with, for the new molecular targets, and inability to pursue a long-term research, which requires a longer funding, not a short-term two or three years funding. So I hope that I was able to raise these issues and at least awareness about these issues. So we as scientists are ready to work here. But because of the problems with funding, very often we are limited by what we can get. So I really hope this event to be a big success. And thank you very much one more time for the invitation. And uh, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Babak. And thank you for raising that awareness. So yes, even the preclinical science lacks that funding. So would you say that the lack of that funding discourages the scientist or the clinician to keep pushing uh, for new ways, to find new ways for pediatric cancer treatment? Or is it in the situation that we have that there are many scientists available with new ideas? Uh, the only thing is it's not getting to the end point. It's not getting to the finish line because of lack of resources. Absolutely. It really discourages the scientists, especially junior scientists, because, uh, for example, in my case, I'm working on the rare molecular targets and I'm working on the development of the drugs for undruggable cancers. And because of the lack of uh, uh, funding and because uh, of uh, these problems that I just described, that usually funders would like to fu uh, fund something that uh, will produce more um, outcome at the end, the rare molecular targets are usually not really um, favorable. And this makes us to shift in the direction of uh, some molecular targets that are more established and even sometimes shift to the adult oncology from the pediatric oncology, sadly. Yes, that is very discouraging and very sad to hear. Thank you. Thank you for the speech that you gave and thank you for raising awareness. As it turns out, the situation is quite devastating throughout the world. Uh, so whether it's West or East, we have the same problem. And that is why together today we are gathered uh, at this global Ankathon to address this issue and to find solutions for better ways of care and treatment. Thank you.